Have you ever wondered what happens when you sign a major record label deal? I have spoke to one bit on my Big Question series today to find exactly that. We go through the whole process and go through all the ins and outs. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Graham Farmer from Data Transmission. And for the first time you're joining us on YouTube, we give out tips and advice to get you further in the music industry. This week, I'm chatting to One Bit. These are the, a group that I've supported for a while on Data Transmission, and I'm gonna to chat to them about signing a major record label deal. The whole process really interests me, uh, as I've never done it, and I've never had an artist that's done it. So I've been looking, for, looking forward to speaking to somebody about how you start it, how the next step, the next step, and the next step. So we went through the whole process in this big question. We had a bit of a technical hitch with this. Zoom wasn't picking up the audio as loud as it should have been, so it wasn't switching from me to them on the picture. So some of it, you get me just drinking tea, looking at them, but you can still hear them speaking. So please bear with it. It's really great content. I learned lots. I'm sure you will do. If you're looking, if you're the one sort of a per, an artist that wants to uh, sign to a major label and go down that route, then this is packed full of content and packed full of tips for you. So stick around to the end. They give us their three biggest tips for signing to a major label. I hope you enjoy this. I'm sorry about the technical bits. Hey guys, let's just start with a start and let's just start with you first and talk about your kind of how you came about, your origins and how you got to where you are now. So yeah, I'm Joe. <laughs> this is John T. Um, we're one bit. Uh, we met about seven years ago now. Uh, at uni, which was a uh, lipper in Liverpool. Uh, we're studying the same thing, doing like sound technology, which is sort of recording bands and all that sort of thing. Uh, and then at the end of uni, we sort of realised that no one was going to give us a job doing that sort of thing. So we decided to set up a studio and move to middle of nowhere, making a recording bands and uh, having a studio, basically. Yeah, it was sort of um, the realisation watching a bunch of, we always thought we were going to go straight into, um, I guess, yeah, uh, being on the engineering side of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so we set up a studio to try and record our mates. Um, we've got this sort of country house um, where we could rent it, work in it, get the studio, have, have bands and people come and work with us um, uh, at a, a rate that was way cheaper than working in a big London studio, for example. Um, the time pressures and everything were a lot more, I guess, uh, strenuous and stressful. Um, and that, that really worked for us um, for quite a few years. We, we only just moved out of the place about six months ago into here, yeah. hence there's no uh, <laughs> and finish the walls behind us. <laughs> um, I thought six months ago, we finished it by now, but yeah. Um, and then during that, I think we were, we sat in the studio one day, we were like, oh, we should, I've always written a load of dance music. Joe has always done well, all sorts, anything from metal to to folk to drum and bass, whatever. Yeah. Um, and so we were like, let's just let's just start our own dance project. It seems seems a lot more fun that way. Um, meant that we could be on the front of it. So that's sort of where one bit came around. I guess yeah, we didn't really have any agenda, like genre wise or musically. It's just kind of what what came out, and then put it on SoundCloud, and it did really well. That's how we sort of started our artist journey. It's, it's certainly evolved over the last few years. I mean, I've, obviously I've been following you guys for a long, for, for a long time, and I've been writing about you for a long time, and the sound has evolved completely, hasn't it, a little bit? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's, there's been a few evolutions. Um, I think that's just a natural progression. It's sort of, um, you play with different things, and you um, sort of like test the water, and then you sort of naturally, I guess, hone into what, what makes most sense and then actually we write a lot of music so maybe we write sort of four or five tracks a week um and so you, you sort of start grouping together these bodies of work and then i guess that's just inevitably where the bit that we liked ended up being so Sony, how how did that let's let's just talk about that process i guess and that's how did that happen how did it start i guess yes yeah, so, well that, that was the the first deal um so yeah we went um basically we we were playing with um, the Milo sample idea that ended up being on my way um, and effectively just took it in and, and played it to the Depeche over there who's at a &R, um, and um, it just, they bought into the idea. So this, this was Ministry of Sound who are now through Sony. Yeah. Um, always is weird. It was there, it was just as they sort of got involved. Um, so although it was a sort of major label structure, 
it felt a lot more grassroots. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think they, well, yeah, because we were one of their first major label signings, um, I, I think it was, yeah, very much like an indie mentality. I say grassroots of, being ministry. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, but in terms of it, it felt, it felt much, the team and everyone around it, it felt much more like it was um, part of the old ministry than, than like a, Yes, and part of Sony, if that makes sense. Mm. They yes, are. yes, it does very much. Like, yeah, still a little bit indie, but still part of a bigger. It's very much being signed to ministry, not necessarily. I don't know if that, that's going to get. Yes. <laughs> so, did, did, did you submit something? To, so, you said you went and sort of saw them. Did you submit Sir first, or did you did you send an email, or how? Like, how, how did that process happen? Uh, I guess it's from our management side. We're in a lucky position where they have. A lot right. with with people at labels. Um, Nick Hawks, uh, he's been around for a long time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think when we when we came across that track and we were all like, "Wow, this this feels big." Then um, yeah, he sort of went and played it to to some people. Did you them. did you already have management then before you before you even started? Think did you did you? I think I need management first and then and then try and get the record signed. Yeah, so we'd, I'm trying to think, yeah, we, we'd had a, a, maybe three or four independent releases. Um, right. And then then we joined with our current management. Um, and that was very much a, a sort of like, let's get the music together. I guess that's, that's the way it works. We sort of write loads until we're all very excited about one or two things. Yes, and, and then we and then we sit down and go right. Where do we think this is is gonna flourish? Where, like who who do we want to be in with um, and think could really add a lot of benefit to that record? Yeah, what would be the um, best home? Yeah, where's the best home? And then you just sort of go knocking on doors, really. And then so they signed it. Uh, I guess happy days. What uh, kind of what happened next for you guys? What what was the next step? So that one. Um, was very much uh, well. It was a good, we needed a future vocal, um, and so uh, we ended up with Noah Cyrus on it, which was another sort of big stroke of luck. Um, really, um, we, I guess, you just sort of. And it sounds stupid, but um, you, you you get given a wish list, so um, it's like how how who would um, you like to sing on it? What yeah, yeah like what sort of the, voice? do you think would work well and yeah, yeah who, who who do you want to be on it um and and so we we just send across i'd love these voices um and then you you get you get a, a load of yeses and noes back um and luckily we've we've been really lucky so far with um with just the sort of caliber of vocalists we've been able to get on our records that's really cool that you still get like a lot of creative decisions um i guess maybe that's the label of so the label you're with and some of the other labels might, but not, might not give it, but that's really cool that you still have that, you know, you have that, you can make a wish list and you can go, I would we'd like these people. Yeah. And so we're in, a, in our new deal now, so we're, we're with positive, <laughs> like Virgin EMI, which is like yeah. a set up to um, post the two singles we put out with Ministry. Um, yeah. It sort of, it inevitably rolls out of that deal and then we get an option of, Handing a music round and um, again, Positiva were a label that we've always wanted to be with. Um, and but yeah, the creative control there's um, it's kind of a different setup um, or feels it to me. Yeah, I guess because um, you're you're directly into the Virgin EMI sort of sphere. Um, it, it definitely feels like the creative controls are entirely in our court. Whether that's that's amazing. What we want to do socially, musically, yeah, visually. Yeah, um, I feel like if if next month we were like, we've written this thing, it has to go out now. Then if it made sense, they they would be on board. It's kind of like we are very much leading it, and they're sort of there to support uh, our ideas and bring bring ideas to the table and sort of help build the best team around it to to get people to hear it. That's incredible. And then I guess when you, one thing for me is when you signed these these deals, did you have to bring in legal teams? Did you have to sign big publish? Did you have to sort of publishing yourself or did management do that? All these things kind of interest me loads, you know? Yeah, so I guess our publishing was already um, 
already sorted. We've been we signed our publishing relatively early on, um, but as we were a year into running the studio, I guess. Yeah. Um, and that was so we were mainly writing for other people at that point. Um, yes. So, before we yeah before we didn't really started the artist project, we're still in that deal. So yeah. that's sort of tied up. Um, and I guess the, the entirely separate entities that the publishing and the, the label side for us. I know some labels do sort of yeah they're like a three sixty thing where it's all in one, but I think especially on the, the major label side of things, it's it's almost always completely separate yeah things with the publishing and the label side. That's uh, interesting. That's really cool. Okay, that, I didn't know that. That's really interesting. Thank you. On the legal side of things, um yeah I think, I think pretty much every major label do you, you have to have to have some legal <laughs> Yeah, uh, the I mean, contracts they're, are pretty big. They're pretty, it, you think you think you get it? You get handed like all of your heads of agreement, mm-hmm. which is like your your this is your deal, and yeah, uh, you get given the, English the, the, the big one, and you're like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna yeah, get someone else to read that. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. It's, it's certainly a different prospect to uh, to us at uh, one page that you get from uh, some of the you know the fifty fifty independent deals at the moment. You know, so you literally get a PDF with a one page. I'm sure that's your 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 bible that you've got from that deal is a lot bigger. Yeah, yeah, I guess like the the thing that you're sort of negotiating or you know agreeing on always starts off as that very simple format in a in a thing that you can understand, and then it's just when it gets to that very final bit before you put pen to paper, it, it gets uh, expanded into this. But I do I, definitely not. Uh, it didn't come across as like an overly daunting experience. I think no. I, I think you hear there's all everyone's got these sort of horror stories of of like. <laughs> The label deal and these sort of like huge legal things and costs and things. Yeah, but for us, it's been pretty straightforward. Um, it's sort of very open, very clear. We tend to get I- involved at the beginning, and then as once the sort of overall sort of everything's dealt with, then it just gets handed to a lawyer to sort out. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> it gets worded. That's really good because that's one of the things I want to do with this video was kind of demystify that whole process because it, it, for me it's, it felt like it was like a big, I was, that was the next question I was going to ask you was daunting. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't because, um, yeah, like I said, this is what the whole purpose of this video basically. Yeah, I think th- there's, there's also, I guess they, they've been through this so many times that um, it's quite, it's, it's uh, their yeah, your hand, I guess your hands sort of held through it as well. They, yeah. they, they, there's no, um, the overriding thing, although there's contracts involved and there's all it's, I guess, points and percentages and all things being sorted out. Um, the main thing is that everyone wants to keep it creative and interesting and fun and exciting, and um, no one's there to get bogged down in a contract, they all just want to release music and, and try and have some success. And uh, so it definitely feels as though, yeah, and I guess again, it's there. It was kind of up to us how involved in that process we wanted to be. Um, I think we normally like to be quite involved in the yeah. sort of contractual bit, but it's just because we quite enjoy it. But I think if, if we didn't want to <laughs> have any part to play in that, then uh, I mean, yeah, you can. We could have trusted our management to sort of step yes. up. Yeah. Um, and has your has your day to day changed since you since you signed those deals? What's what does it look like now, for instance, compared to what it did before? <laughs> Less music. <laughs> we do a lot more sort of. Um, running around taking ludicrous photos um, mm. and um, yeah no it changes a bit um, but mainly just through release period um, you've got a lot of interviews to do and a lot of um, yeah just guess like more social media content we came from studio so we're we're very comfortable behind decks or in a studio <laughs> um, right in the and so the idea of I guess stepping out and getting involved in in the wider side of artistry for us is the thing that mainly changes um, mm. and um, being sort of more just visually present and, and doing your, yeah, all your social media content, your, your interviews and your just bits and pieces, your radio things. And yeah, that, nice. the, it takes up a lot of your day. Yeah. Um, a surprising amount of time. <laughs> but it's, it's all good because it's the thing that legitimizes it because you can bury your head in the sand and, and just sit in the studio and feel quite, I okay, guess not locked up, but, Mm. You, it's easy to sit just writing the music. That's the, I guess that's the simple way well, it is for us. That's the, <laughs> we spent seven years just doing that. And so 
it's, it's really exciting getting to take that and, and sort of give it to people. Yeah, nice. That's cool. Finally, let's ask you your big three big tips for signing a deal, uh, signing a major deal. Um, I guess, firstly, um, making sure that you don't, I guess, jump the gun. Um, and just, um, before, before you've got your core sound music together, I think there's a lot of people that come out with um, maybe like eight or ten tracks and you're like, yeah, yeah I've got this, it's great. Um, but even with us, we were sort of chasing our tail a little bit after our first single and but the, the projects and the times that I see flourish sort of most excitingly mm. uh, are the are the ones that people have really sculpted this body of work and 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 really really hope it sounds it sounds sort of obvious to say but um yeah just making you've got a really really strong sense of self because there's you're not asked to rationalize everything at every point but um you definitely are the one leading it and yeah, so, I guess I guess yeah. my thing would be like a tangent on that, being that don't don't expect the label to do everything for you that you can sort of, you know, write a track, sign it, you're like, cool, done. I, I think yeah. some people sort of see <laughs> the signing part as like, I've made it. Um, when it's yeah, that is obviously the the beginning of the journey and yeah. run one. Yeah. You very much have to be the ones leading the the project and sort of uh it's it's that thing of like if you sign a deal or not you're gonna get there and signing the deal is just gonna sort of help you get there quicker uh and in a bigger way i guess for me it just, it just enjoy it um it's it's like you never know how long this is gonna go on for like, yeah. like for me i definitely feel like i have this absolute wish and a prayer dream job <laughs> I'm just dancing it and it's paying off and so it's just yeah just have have fun and like there, there's obviously there's stresses and there's a lot of things to do and sometimes you yeah I don't know it's just just yeah, a I lot of work and sometimes you can get bogged down in that and actually just being like oh, this is pretty cool actually yeah just, I think it, you could positive. get bogged down in in all the other things which aren't the music and not not yeah just i guess yeah it. sticking with what you got into it for yeah not trying to strive for being someone else yeah thank you very much and the new single's out now it, it is, is out now yes i will put all the links below in the in the cards and the info below so they can find out all about you and follow you from uh, from those links below thanks, thanks guys thanks again for watching us on data transmission this week i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you gained something with it. again i'm sorry about the technical hitches i'll try and improve it for next time if you got some value from this, please share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, give us a little comment below. Tell us, have you signed to a major label? What did you, what, what, how did it go down for you? Drop that in the comments. I'd love to know. I'd love to know more about this subject. I've been Graham Farmer. I'll see you again next week. Cheers.